Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday the 13th, 2013, and I'm David Knight. Now, today we're going to lead off with a story from Anthony Gucciardi. Remember yesterday we talked about how the credibility of the U.S. government, or I should say the American regime, is really in freefall. Nobody's believing what they're saying anymore. And one of the reasons for that is real, authentic media. And as Anthony Gucciardi points out in his story on StoryLeak, real media is blocking Obama's attempts at plunging the nations into World War III. He said, in a truly powerful augmentation of history, spreading the word over staged events like the Syrian chemical attacks has ultimately forced the Obama administration and its affiliates to push back on their plans to launch military action. Now, going back even to the Boston bombing, we had a tremendous effect on what was happening with the narrative there. All indications were that they were planning on making this something that was going, they were going to blame on domestic terrorism. They did it on Patriot's Day, but there were many, many other indications that we pointed out at the time. We took looks at pictures that people were taking. We were pushing back and covering the stories and the evidence as it unfolded, and they were reacting to that. And even if people didn't believe the case that we were making, still the term false flag entered the vernacular to the extent that when this Syrian false flag came up, everyone was under, understood the technique, they understood how it was being used, and you have people like Pat Buchanan, Ron Paul, not afraid to use the term false flag because it is real. It is something that has been used over and over again historically. And as Anthony Gucciotti goes on to point out in his article, he says, the answer quite simply is that now we are the only media. There's no longer the need to play into the psychological minefield of labeling certain sources as, quote, alternative news. When we can go back to leading Gallup polls and show that virtually no one, no one trusts the mainstream media. And that's bad news for the six corporations that own 90% of the mainstream media. There's a reason that former U.S. National Security Advisor and Trilateral Commission co-founder Zbigniew Brzezinski says that there is a global political awakening that's placing a wrench in the wheel of the war machine. So it's had a real, real dramatic effect, and we can all see that. We can see how Obama had to back out and back down. We can see how, at first, even though it looked like Republicans led by the Republican leadership, which is in bed with the military industrial complex, it looked like they were going to push the narrative and they were going to say, well, we, we have to go in. Even though they didn't have any evidence, they didn't have a real cause, they were going to go in for the, for the war. But they got a lot of pushback. They got pushback from other Republicans who were not in the leadership, and they got a huge amount of pushback from the public, who's just simply not buying this. The day before this was supposed to launch, on the Friday before everybody expected that Obama was going to send in the missiles, CNN was in full war mode. They were talking about surgical strikes. They were talking about the accuracy of the missiles. They were talking about the moral imperative to go in. They were cheerleading this. It's not the mainstream media that changed public opinion. It's the authentic media that changed public opinion. And they have to do something about that. And they're working on it. And they've got a false flag bill in the Senate. They've got their own little, they actually have legislation now that's false flag. Listen to the title of this bill, the Free Flow of Information Act of 2013. And here are more details about that bill. A Senate committee passed a media shield law this week that essentially allows the government to determine who is a real journalist for the purposes of protection. Based on the bill, a real journalist is someone who works or worked for an entity or service that shares news or information by means of a newspaper, wire service, a news agency, or via a magazine, or through television or radio broadcast. These people would have to have the primary intent to investigate events and procure material in order to share that information with the public. Opinion journalists might not be covered. Senator Feinstein worried the shield law would provide special privileges to those who are not reporters at all, saying those who don't receive a salary couldn't be considered real reporters. Now the shield law is very careful to distinguish real journalists from those who shouldn't be protected. This means bloggers and citizen journalists, unless they can prove to the government that at the inception of their information gathering process, their sole intent was to inform the public. The bill explicitly excludes protection for those whose principal function is to publish primary source documents that haven't been authorized. This means no WikiLeaks cables, no NSA leaks, just a rampant, 
unchecked government. This is in direct violation of the Constitution, which prohibits the making of any law abridging the freedom of speech or infringing on the freedom of the press. Doesn't the S.H.I.E.L.D. law actually abridge the freedom of speech of citizen journalists by intimidating them with the threat of prosecution? And the S.H.I.E.L.D. law also says they're going to protect real journalists from having to reveal their sources. So I guess the Fifth Amendment is only there to protect IRS officials who have committed criminal acts and perjury. What is actually happening here is the government is trying to take a fundamental right and turn it into a government-granted privilege a privilege that can be revoked by them for any reason that they deem necessary in the future. They created the S.H.I.E.L.D. law to protect journalists, but only the journalists that they decide are worthy of protection. The S.H.I.E.L.D. law actually bypasses the First and Fifth Amendment by giving a virtual driver's license to those the government deems worthy of free speech. Basically, this S.H.I.E.L.D. law only protects the corporate media and not citizen journalists who aren't willing to regurgitate the same government-vetted stories. It's not protection at all, but prior constraint. And even if you are a real journalist, like Michael Hastings, if you get a little too controversial, you'll be investigated by the FBI. So why is the Obama administration so vigorously attacking the alternative press? It's because the mainstream media is dead. The authentic media is winning the war for the minds of the people. That's why the Obama administration is protecting its lapdog journalists while instilling fear in those that might dare ask questions. Obama's hired even more journalists to be a part of his team, up to 19 journalists from influential outlets like ABC, CNN, The Washington Times, and LA Times are going to work for the very administration they should be holding accountable. So don't expect any of those journalists to report on their bosses' debacles like Obamacare or the illegal NSA spying and wiretapping or Benghazi. Maybe Obama needed more journalists on his Transforming America team for the big rollout of government-funded news after the recent repeal of the domestic propaganda ban. Those journalists can now use their talent to influence public opinion, shaping a favorable narrative for war or for giving up your rights in favor of safety. And that is what this attack on the press all boils down to. They're trying to convince us that our fundamental right to freedom of speech and freedom of the press should be a government-granted privilege that they'll reserve only for their loyal lapdogs. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. It's no protection. This is simply a false flag to take the freedom of press as well as things like the Fifth Amendment and not be intimidated by using the Fifth Amendment. They want to make the Fifth Amendment just apply to government officials, like the uh, IRS official, Lois Lerner, who was caught in criminal activity, and she didn't want to testify about it, so she took the Fifth Amendment. But uh, they're just going to let people like that take the Fifth Amendment and not people who are bloggers, not people who are investigating. It's similar to the way that they don't allow anybody, they don't want anybody to take pictures. They send the police out to falsely arrest people who are taking pictures. Meanwhile, they put cameras up everywhere. They have cameras on the police vehicles, they have cameras on the police themselves, but of course, many times, if it's not something that suits their narrative, those records disappear. That's why we need to have our own cameras. That's why we need to have everyone operating as citizen journalists and exercising their free speech. Now, Matt Drudge has pushed back a lot on this. In an article by Julie Wilson on InfoWars, Matt Drudge eviscerates fascist Dianne, Dianne Feinstein. Listen to some of the things that Matt Drudge had to say. He really nailed it here. He said, comments from Senator Feinstein yesterday on Who's Reporter were disgusting. A 17-year-old blogger is as important as Wolf Blitzer, fascist. He also wrote on Twitter, federal judge once ruled that Drudge is not a reporter, a journalist, or a news gatherer, yet millions of readers a day come looking for cooking recipes. See, real journalism is determined by content. That's why people go to Drudge. That's why people go to InfoWars. They want content. They want content that's interesting, but they want content that's authentic. They want to know they're not getting fed a government line. So real journalism is determined by content, and the marketplace is going to determine that, not the government. It's almost kind of like what we see with the FISA court. Who would have thought that a secret court could go in and determine what the, what the boundaries of the law are going to be to pretend that they are going to 
modify the Constitution that everyone swore to uphold. And we're not even allowed to see these secretive determinations. We're not allowed to know. We're not allowed to know that they're violating the law. We're not allowed to know that uh, there's illegal criminal activity going on in an organization. If you report that, they're going to come after you and they're going to try to jail you. But that's precisely what needs to be put out there. We're not talking about exposing the plans for a nuclear bomb. We're talking about exposing the criminal activity of government. This is what they're upset about. This is why they're coming up with this Protection Act. It was called the Free Flow of Information Act. That's why they're coming up with it. The last thing they want is the free flow of information. That's why they're losing the narrative. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.